Welcome back to the channel. This video is on atmospheric science and meteorology and severe weather. And this video, we're looking at the amazing formation of tropical cyclones, how they form the stages, what the ingredients, the location in terms of latitude and where they're going to move, why they move and why this is an absolutely amazing natural phenomenon. This is the Earth Science Classroom. So before we get into the formation of these amazing atmospheric conditions, they are generally a low pressure system, which is a cyclone, and it can rotate and spin in two different directions, anticlockwise or clockwise. Now in terms of tropical, that refers to the geographic location or the latitude that these storms are forming, the origin, the place of birth, and it's going to then migrate and move across the Earth's surface from that location, from that original point. And that's what we call it tropical and cyclone is based on the pressure. So low pressure is generally considered anything below 1013 millibars on the surface. And the cyclones can go down to anything below 980 down to a very low 960 or 970 occasionally lower than that. Now these also bring about an organization and level of structure to these clouds and these cyclones that is unique to this atmospheric phenomena. You can see and clearly identify a large tropical cyclone, whether it be a hurricane or a typhoon or a cyclone, because of its structure and how it's organized. Now, the rain bands, the eye, the eye wall, the pressure, the wind is all going to be acting and have certain characteristics that make this readily identifiable from space and from radar. Now think of a tropical cyclone as a mode of transportation, a way that nature is able to transfer both heat, thermal energy from the equator and also the water cycle is going to transfer a lot of water vapor and precipitation in different forms, whether it be drizzle, showers, torrential, thunderstorms, lightning, thunder, the occasional tornado. And this will transfer from the tropics up into the subtropics and mid latitudes and transfer this heat away from the equator as like with ocean currents and atmospheric wind in general, like global circulation model circulation cells like the Hadley, Ferrell and Polar, the hurricanes or typhoons or cyclones, these tropical cyclones in general are used to transfer all of this heat and water as part of the water cycle from the equator to higher latitudes. So the formation of these tropical cyclones occurs at certain geographic locations across the planet, over oceans, over very warm oceans, and this occurs around the tropics. So between five degrees and 20 degrees north and south of the equator, as shown in the map, and you see the formation and the origin is based on the latitudes, which corresponds to the sea surface temperatures being high enough, which is gonna create the amount of water vapor required. But it all has to start around the tropics. Then we can add in our global circulation model, whereby we have the Hadley cell either side of the equator, and we have the formation of the easterlies or trade winds, and then we have the westerlies, which are the surface winds that are part of the feral cell between 30 and 60 degrees north and south of the equator. And these two prevailing wind directions are named based on where the wind comes from and the curvature of these winds is a result of deflection of air caused by the Coriolis effect and the spin of the earth or rotation of the earth. When considering the formation of tropical cyclones, you have to also consider the ocean currents and how the surface of the ocean is moving and whether the ocean currents are warm or cold based on different locations. Now, around the tropics, the five to 20 degree north and south, you generally have warm ocean currents and they flow in a certain direction, especially around the equator with the equatorial currents, both north and south, moving in a westerly direction from east to west. Now, the hurricanes which are formed over oceans and powered by the ocean is going to be dictated not only by the wind direction and the wind speed and the wind deflection, but also by the ocean currents 
based on the location and therefore the latitude. And you'll see for the Northern Atlantic around the North Atlantic Gyra, the equatorial current goes from the coast or the edge of Western Africa and flows west across the Atlantic Ocean towards the Caribbean or the Caribbean, the Lesser Antilles and the West Indies, and then on to over Cuba and the Bahamas onto the North American continent, which hit in areas like Florida or going across into the Gulf of Mexico or up the East Coast to areas like the Carolinas or into New England. And this is going to join up with the Gulf Stream, which is a very warm, powerful ocean current, transferring warm water from the Caribbean or Caribbean Sea, Gulf of Mexico up the East Coast and across the Northern Atlantic Ocean towards Western Europe. So the combination of both the air, the surface ocean currents, and the Coriolis effect is going to create these amazing cyclonic systems. Tropical cyclones are a combination of both the ocean and the atmosphere and how they interact and exchange energy between them creates these amazing low pressure systems. So certain ingredient ingredients are required to make these storms. Otherwise, they just don't materialize. They can start and try to organize themselves, but without the right ingredients over the right period of time, this cyclone will never become what it should be and just becomes a small bunch of cumulus clouds that dissipate. However, the ones that do form have certain ingredients that are in place both in the ocean and the atmosphere in order to create this storm. So the first one is it has to happen over a large body of water, generally an ocean or a sea or maybe occasionally a very large lake, but generally over oceans and seas. And these oceans and seas must be over a certain temperature at the surface, over 26.5 degrees Celsius, which equates to 79.7 degrees Fahrenheit, or even around to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, that's fine, but it has to be that temperature or above to produce the, the amount of water vapor and moisture required to form these amazingly large, basically rotating rain bands and thunderstorm clouds. Then you need low atmospheric pressure so you need unstable air that's rising up you need the water vapor rising up you need condensation dew point you need the formation of cumulus clouds and cumulonimbus clouds to organize themselves in rain bands and you need this low pressure to basically drag in and draw in all of this weather and wind to build the cyclone into a larger system and of course you need the moisture and water vapor to fuel it you need the wind to be light and no to little wind shear, which is the change of wind direction based on altitude as you go higher in the troposphere. So you need stable, consistent wind to draw in and create this storm. You need rotation. So as the storm is going to move from the equator or equatorial region or the tropics around 520 degrees north and south, when it starts to move away from the equator, you start to get the rotation and deflection of the wind caused by the Coriolis effect. And this will start to form a rotating or spinning system, which helps to grow and organize the whole cyclone. The lifespan or the journey that a tropical cyclone will make starts as a very basic tropical wave, which is basic, which is pretty much a area of low pressure across the ocean and this is lower than the surrounding area causing there to be a trough created in the atmosphere at a certain location and if the winds persist to be drawn into this lower area of atmospheric pressure then it can turn to a what's called a tropical disturbance. Disturbance means that there is lower pressure, there is rising air, there is weather and clouds being drawn in and it starts to become more intense, wind starts to be more persistent, and it can turn into what's called a tropical depression. So here, these can be categorized and numbered and watched by satellite and to see if they're gonna turn into a tropical storm. Now, depression is, again, a bit lower pressure, faster wind, start to get the organization of rain bands and thunderstorm clouds, and then the tropical storm is just a larger version of a depression where you start to get the larger 
cyclone growing with more clouds, more wind, more precip, and starts to migrate across the oceans. Now, if it reaches 74 miles per hour of sustained winds around the tropical cyclone, different areas or one area, it could be called a tropical cyclone. Or in some areas, like the Atlantic, called a hurricane. If it's in the Pacific, it'll be called a typhoon. If it's in the Southern Hemisphere, it'll be called a cyclone. So once it hits a certain wind speed, then we classify it as an actual tropical cyclone. Tropical cyclones are similar to many natural phenomena that form in a step-by-step -step process from start to finish or from birth to death. Now, in terms of tropical cyclones, if the ingredients are in place and the location, the temperature of the water, the ocean water, the wind is consistent and light in certain directions and there's less or no wind shear and there is condensation at the dew point and formation of clouds and cumulus clouds to turn into cumulonimbus clouds and these make up the environment and it's consistent over a long period of time, then we can start to develop a tropical cyclone. Now, this is stage one, which is to do with mostly the tropical wave and tropical disturbance, whereby the low pressure trough is present over the ocean. There's rising air, there's condensation, there is instability in the atmosphere, and you have the formation and start of this cloud formation, and the wind is starting to drag into this location of the low pressure. Stage two is a continuance of stage one in terms of over a certain time period of consistent conditions, you have the development and increase of clouds, cumulus clouds forming around a rotating system whereby in the Northern Hemisphere it's counterclockwise, in the Southern Hemisphere it's clockwise, and you have pressure gradient of winds coming in towards the center location and you start to get a more organized system and this is relating to a tropical depression and a tropical storm where the winds start to pick up going towards the low pressure and you get this rotation and the whole system starts to strengthen. In stage three we're looking at a mature developed tropical cyclone and it will be named based on location or ocean it is formed in whether a typhoon, a cyclone, or a hurricane, and you have a formation of a distinct eye where you have this lighter winds and descending air, and around this is the eye wall, which is the fastest winds with the most developed and thick cumulus clouds. You have this large diameter storm of large cumulus rain bands that are spiraling according to the wind direction, the pressure gradients, the wind is above 74 miles per hour, and you have this varying intensity of this full-blown tropical cyclone and all of the natural hazards that come with it in terms of storm surges, torrential rain, flooding, maybe some tornadoes, and some definite wind damage. Now, stage four is in the latter stages of the cyclone's life cycle, and it's going to be moving further away from the equator towards the higher latitudes, especially in the mid latitudes, and very occasionally up towards the 50 and 60, even 70 degree north and south latitudes, but that's very, very rare. When it goes into the mid latitudes, you're getting not only a cooler ocean generally with less fuel and the ingredients start to diminish. Also, the storm could be heading over land, which again would drastically remove all the ingredients that is going to sustain such a large rotating tropical cyclone. So these storms can actually move up into the higher latitudes and join in with not only the jet stream above it, but also any kind of mid-latitude cyclone or current cold front or warm front or high pressure that's kind of directing this storm around a certain ridge will help to join up with any existing low pressure that is happening around the mid latitude. So this can be elongated into a larger lifespan if there's other low pressure systems out there in mid latitudes that they can join in and feed off and perhaps even strengthen maybe for a short while, maybe over the ocean 
especially rather than land, but you have this continuation of this cyclone into the high latitudes and of course deflecting off to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere towards any kind of land like maybe the western European countries or maybe Mexico if it's a eastern Pacific hurricane or Japan if it's a western Pacific hurricane. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.